uh, I was studying chemistry and I realized that I wasn't very good in inorganic chemistry either, uh, but I was really good at biochemistry. And so I started studying metabolic pathways and uh, my first research projects were in looking at protein synthesis regulation and aging. Uh, we discovered a lot of the age-related changes, the things like messenger RNAs have a very unique tail to them. We you know, we we determined how that changed and how that changed the ribosomes attaching to it, how much protein you could make. So we were looking at very mechanistic things. My advisor at that time, who was, you know, master's Arlen Richardson, expert in aging, said, I think you really ought to get a PhD. I go, really? <laughs> and he said, in fact, I know people at University of Minnesota who are doing this kind of work, uh, and I think you should go there. I said, Okay, so I did. And uh, they happened to be in nutrition. Uh, and part of the group was experts in muscle and fat cell development. And so I combined my interest in biochemistry, protein turnover with nutrition and muscle health. And that's sort of how it all evolved. And I guess I became an expert in it because I've always had an intuitive understanding of where the answer was. Uh, I just see the answer before everybody else even asks the question. And that's where we got to leucine's story. What is the answer to our poor metabolic health in the, the world? Too many carbohydrates, too many grains. 80% of the plant-based grains in the world come from wheat. Wheat is the single problem with health in the world. And how does that compare to not eating enough protein as well? Wheat is probably the single worst protein in the world. Uh, it's deficient. Uh, it's low or deficient in five of the essential amino acids. Uh, and so as diets become poor, uh, either in the, L in the U.S., a developed country because of choice, or in underdeveloped countries because of lack of choice, uh, as the protein quality goes down, your ability to repair, recover, uh, re take care of the body goes down dramatically. So, you know, I think that's a problem. Um, you're in Australia. I don't know if you know Steve Simpson and David Robinheimer. Uh, so they are famous for a theory called the protein leverage hypothesis. Uh, and basically what that says is that every person, every animal eats for a protein target. And what we did in 1980s in the United States is we adopted the Food Guide Pyramid that said, eat less protein, eat more grains. And that diluted the nutrient quality of the diet. And so to get your protein, everybody had to eat more carbs. And what we found was that the average intake in the U.S. went up by about, of calories went up by about 350 calories. And it all came from carbohydrate-based things, breads, pastas, um, cereals, uh, breaded products, etc. We were getting about the same protein, but we were half to eating through we were half to eating 350 or more calories to get to it. I think that most adults should fall between 1.2 and 1.8 grams per kg. We typically target around the 1.5, 1.6, which does translate into 0.75 grams per pound. So we think that is a good target. And if you target that level, then the quality isn't as important. You're probably going to get enough of the essential amino acids, even if, you know, 50 or 60% comes from plant protein. So the quality and quantity are interrelated. If you eat enough protein, the quality factor goes isn't as important. And the other, I mean, the other aspect of the quality not only is the essential amino acid, but the bioavailability. Most plants, say for example, nuts and seeds, the bioavailability is only about fifty percent. So if you think you're eating ten grams, you're probably only getting five, and that's true of wheat too. So you know, there, wheat is typically around sixty percent bioavailable. So uh, you know, it's a it's an issue of overall quantity, overall quality, and overall bioavailability. So again, if you if you're up and around the 1.5, 1.6 grams per kg, you don't have to think too much about it. But if you're a vegetarian, and most vegetarians in the U.S. 
fall between about 55 and 65 grams of protein, those are risks. I mean, if that much of your protein is coming from poor quality plant proteins, you're probably borderline. And if you're 25 or 30, you can probably pull that off. But a 60-year-old is going to get into real problems with that kind of a poor quality diet. 